Um, so to introduce myself, I'm Dr. Patricia Mills. I'm a medical doctor. I specialized in physical medicine rehabilitation, also certification uh, underway for functional medicine. My passion is finding out the root causes of diseases and conditions. And in particular, my passion as a medical doctor is in women's health because we need more women like you, not just surviving, but thriving. So you can do all of the things. You can bring more energy into your business, into your, um, you know, your love, your love life, into your friends, into your family, into your fun. And uh, you deserve all of this and more. And so today we're going to be talking about uh, the missing link between gut health and hormones, which is super, super important. And actually, as a medical doctor, this is something that we were not um, like the link was not made. So it's interesting because in medical school, you're taught about like, you know, the gut and then you're taught about the ovaries and you're taught about, you know, the hormones that the brain makes, but you're not really taught about how this all comes together. Now, um, I just want to see if anybody could please put in a comment because I want to make sure that the comments is working. Uh, oh, great. Wonderful. I think I can see one here. Perfect. So it looks like the comments are working, which means that I'll be able to answer your questions as they come up. So um, we do um, have, um, and Melissa, thanks for joining. That's so wonderful. Hi, Nadia. Hi, thanks for joining. Wonderful. So glad to have you here in this beautiful space. Um, so what, what happens here is that, oh, hi, hi, Melissa. That's great. Hi, Kelly. Nice to see you. Wonderful. So uh, what happens is that we are not taught about the link and there's actually some things about the gut that we're not taught about related to hormones. So I'm going to start there. Um, did you know that a huge amount of our hormones are actually made in our gut? Yeah, it's kind of fascinating, actually. Um, so we all know about endocrine glands, right? Sasha from San Diego. Yeah, we all know about all those endocrine glands. We're familiar with them. That's generally speaking the ovaries. But did you know, uh, and in men, the testes, but you know, adrenal glands make hormones, our pituitary gland makes hormones. Um, and there are organs that are um, specifically made to um, created to make a lot of hormones. And actually, the gut is interesting because the gut is an endocrine uh, gland as well. But what's different about the gut is instead of it being like all um, hormone making, there are patches of the gut that are dedicated to making hormones. So it's like islands of cells in the gut that are dedicated to secreting hormones into our gut. Uh, right, Nadia from Sweden? Yeah, isn't that fascinating? Um, so for example, I'll give you an example, um, uh, the hormone serotonin. So serotonin is a hormone that is um, classically thought of being made in the brain. And when you have low levels of serotonin, you go into states of low mood and even depression to the point where if you go to your doctor and he or she thinks that you're really depressed, they're going to give you a prescription of um, uh, medication. And usually the first prescription that they're going to try to see if it works for you is a, a SSRI medication, a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. That's fancy speak for they're trying to increase the amount of serotonin that's available to your brain. So you're not feeling so low mood or depressed depressed, right? Um, well, did you know that about 90% of the serotonin in your body is made in your gut? So a small amount is made in the brain, but a large amount of it is made in the gut. Now it has different actions in the gut, but it is part of that, that feel good sensation. If you don't have enough serotonin made in the gut, that does affect your, your body and therefore your mental state. So there is a connection between gut health and mental health, which I'm going to go uh, deeper into um, in another session, potentially next week. That's been a question that's been coming up a lot. But um, I wanted to just um, give that as one example of how the the gut and our hormone health is, is, is connected. Our gut makes hormones. Um, what are some other hormones that our gut makes? Well, insulin is a hormone which regulates our blood sugar. Um, there's this hormone called cholecystokinin, which is uh, released when the when the when you put food in the mouth and it goes into the stomach, and that creates a, a you know like a wonderful chemistry that then um, signals your gallbladder to contract and dump the bile out so that you can then detoxify the bile and absorb your healthy fats. So there's this beautiful link and connection. 
So um, you need a healthy gut to make these really crucial hormones, okay? And here's the interesting thing. Did you know that there's a connection between your gut and your sex hormones? What I mean by sex hormones is your estrogen, your progesterone, and your testosterone, and the, and the mother hormone of all of them, which is pregnenolone, and then DHEA, okay? These are all really, really crucial hormones. Estrogen is... Um, Oh, uh, and Nadia's saying, oh, oh, I'm so glad that this is helpful to you, Nadia. Yeah, so stay tuned. There's a lot more on this coming up. I'm so glad it's already been helpful. So estrogen is like your va va uh, hormone, okay? It's a vivacious kind of curvy hormone, plump limbs, lips, um, plump breasts, plump thighs, you know, in the right way, those curves. Progesterone is like your feel-good hormone, your chill hormone, um, and it's also um, the hormone that um, helps you get pregnant, that fertile hormone that you need to get pregnant and keep the pregnancy into the first trimester. And when you're in menopause, it's the hormone that drops the most and you have to nurture the most to maintain your feel-good sensations in menopause. Testosterone is like your libido hormone. It's like your muscle hormone, right? You don't want to lose your muscle mass even though you're working out. Well, you need testosterone for that and for libido, for that lovely um, sexual, like that um, sexuality sensation that's, you know, it's being, being sensuous, right? Um, and, we, and we often lose that as a woman when our testosterone goes down and that's just not a good scene. We want to have that up. Well, here's a link between your gut health and your hormones. Um, it's a, a very frequent thing these days that the lining of the gut is being damaged, okay, by things like antibiotics, um, additives and chemicals in our, in our processed foods, um, you know, uh, non-bioidentical hormones, whether it's oral contraceptives, um, you know, especially oral contraceptives taken by mouth, it can go in and, and hurt, uh, cause inflammation at the lining of the gut. Um, anti-inflammatory medications for pain control can erode the lining of the gut. All of these things damage the lining of the gut. And even stress can damage the lining of the gut, by the way, which is very interesting and ties back into the brain-gut connection, which I will save for another presentation. But just so you know, stress can damage the lining of the gut. And what happens when the lining of the gut is damaged is that it cannot do its very necessary function, which is to... Um, allow like first of all to break down the food in such a way that it can be absorbed so our food is like obviously you eat it and you chew it and then it has to be broken down by the acid in your stomach uh, and then there's like actually little enzymes which you can think of as little tools that live that are created made in the lining of the gut and their job is to break down the food so that your body can then absorb it so it's like um, if you were to, and uh, you know, let's say your food was like, um, um, uh, and Soraya has a question, what kind of test does a woman take to check hormone levels? I'm going to tell you at the end, that's a great question. Let's say your food is like this bracelet. Um, your body can't absorb the bracelet through the lining of the gut. It has to break down the bracelet into all its tiny little parts, like the beads. And the digestive enzymes are like the tools that snip, 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 snip these beads um, so they can be all individual floating around and then they can get absorbed into the lining of your gut. And if you have a damaged gut, the, that those foods cannot be properly broken down and they cannot be properly absorbed. So now you lack the building blocks that you need to make your hormones right? So if you have poor gut health, you're going to have poor hormone health for sure. It's just one of those things that happens. I've been through this myself. I, um, you know, how long is it now? Six years now. I went through the process that maybe you're going to be embarking on soon by virtue of watching this, um, uh, you know, and, and you know, uh, learning about this is that I learned that I had what you would call a leaky gut, which is when the damage to the lining of the gut is, is significant enough that foods that are um, so like the food is supposed to be broken down entirely to be absorbed in. But if you have a leaky gut before you have a chance to break this down completely, parts of it start slipping in through the lining of the gut. And, you, and it gets into the blood and the body does not like to see these big pieces of food in the body. It's, uh, it's only meant to see these tiny, small pieces of food. And then what happens? You get food sensitivities. So my first clue that I had a leaky gut was that I did a food sensitivity test and I came back like positive for a whole bunch of different foods. And, and then I didn't know this at the time, but I looked, I researched, I'm a, I'm a internationally 
recognized published researcher. I've got the skills to do this kind of research. So I researched into it. And over time, I realized uh, there were various things in my life, including oral contraceptives, antibiotics, anti-inflammatories that had eroded the lining of my gut, stress from being a, a doctor, you know, working and doing on call and all those kinds of things uh, that medical doctors do, <clears throat> you know, type A woman, you know, like woohoo, recovering type A perfectionist. And, um, and I had all of these issues and I had to work to heal the, my gut. And interestingly, I had also been having hormonal imbalances. And now six years later, here I am, my, my gut is healed, my hormones are balanced. It's all really wonderful. How do I know? Um, there is a test called the Dutch test. There's lots of different tests, but I mentioned the Dutch test because um, it's the most comprehensive test that I've ever seen. You can actually order it on your own if you go to the Dutch test website. Um, the problem with ordering it on your own is that the results come back and it's very complicated to understand. Um, and so it is useful to do this with a doctor. This is one of the things that I have available for people that I work with. But if you have a naturopathic doctor or a functional medicine doctor and they have an account with the Dutch test, you can definitely get that ordered. And it's a beautiful test. It shows you... Um, you know, what are your, like your estrogen, right? Your vivacious estrogen. Well, it gets broken down to different kinds of estrogen and some of them are toxic and you want to get those toxic estrogens out. And you can see sometimes in these tests that the, um, that the toxic estrogen levels are high. Uh, and that's been associated with things like, um, you know, breast cancer. Oh, goodness, right? Uh, hormone, um, uh, estrogen uh, sensitive hormone, uh, uh, estrogen sensitive cancers. Um, you can also see what your cortisol levels are if you get the cortisol test included. And so four times a day, they, you do the saliva and you see how is your cortisol doing? How's your stress levels doing? There's some really good information you can get from that test. So that's the test that I would recommend uh, for, um, for the question that was asked. And then how do you know that your, how is your gut health? Well, one test, like I said, to do is the food sensitivities test. That's a really good test to do. Um, it gives you a really good idea of how your food is being broken down or how your gut is absorbing the food and, and is exposing your body to um, undigested food particles. There's also a stool test that you can do, not the kind that your family doctor would order, but a more comprehensive stool test. And there's lots of different kinds. Again, you would probably want to connect with a healthcare provider, a functional medicine or naturopathic doctor um, who would be able to help you interpret the test. You can order the tests again on your own, but it's the interpretation that's really hard. And it comes up with a lot of interesting information like uh, undigested protein in your gut, which working its way backwards, you need to make sure you have enough stomach acid, you need to make sure you have enough bile acid production and, and excretion, you have to have enough digestive enzymes going on, right? And there's a period of time when um, you have to support your body with these things like, you know, taking targeted supplements in order to provide your body with what it needs while you figure out what it is that's going on. However, there's so much that you can do even just at the level of, um, you know, nutritional level, um, you know, uh, knowing the triggers uh, of uh, what causes things like leaky gut. And I've done a lot of Facebook lives um, now in this group, and you can go back and you can see uh, some of my lives to get some of that information. <clears throat> I also, for people who want to like get more access to these videos, like all of these videos that I do, I post them all on my Patreon page. Um, and for like uh, the price of a cup of, cup of coffee a month, you get access to all of my videos and you can go and I have video on leaky gut and food sensitivities because it's not the kind of thing I can sit here and explain all of it to you. But I just want you to understand that if you have any issues with hormonal imbalances, including the thyroid, the thyroid hormone gland is closely connected to gut health because the bile acid that is in your gallbladder and needs to be secreted with every meal uh, also has uh, con constituents like molecules inside it that help activate the thyroid hormone. And again, if you are um, uh, in poor gut health and you're not absorbing your foods and you're not getting things like iodine into your body, well, you cannot make um, thyroid hormone without adequate amount of, um, horm of, um, of uh, uh, iodine. Here's a really great question that's come up. How about gluten-free food, for example? Is it helpful for the gut? I would say it depends. Here's the problem with gluten-free foods. Now, um, if you're speaking about gluten-free foods with flour products in them, I don't like those products because what they do is they have too many what I, of what I call fast carbs. They're, they're flours made out of things like rice, 
um, quinoa oats, but because they've been highly processed into a flour, it's a quick shot of, of, um, of um, the glucose, which is sugar, into the blood. And what that does is it's fastly absorbed. The blood sugar goes up very quickly. Your insulin hormone, which is your sugar hormone, gets activated very quickly and it goes up like really, really high when it's supposed to go up slowly and down like within this really lovely comfort range, which is what you get when you eat slow carbs. Slow carbs are things like um, vegetables, fruits, whole grains that have not been turned into flour like white basmati rice, oats, millet, amaranth, buckwheat, those kinds of things. The fast carbs are anything that has been turned and mechanically processed down into a very fine flour and including fruit juices too, like just quick sources of sugar. So instead of getting nice slow releases of insulin hormone, you get these massive spikes of insulin hormone and there's a cascade of events that happens that imbalances your cortisol hormone, your estrogen, your progesterone and testosterone. So I am not a big fan of gluten-free products if they are made with flour. If you mean gluten-free like sticking with a whole foods diet that includes fruits and vegetables and whole grains, um, like the rice and basma, uh, the basmati rice, the real, not the not the quick cooking rice and not the quick oats, but the real oats and the real rice. Now there's a story behind that, um, and I actually have a free ebook explaining all of this, uh, fast carbs, slow carbs, and even giving you recipes on how to properly cook your oats, for example. And you will find that if you go into my Facebook group, Wild Wisdom for Women with Dr. Patricia Mills, MD, and you go into the About section when you're admitted and download the free ebook, and I explain that for you. And so yes, I have a big problem. I'm not a big fan of gluten-free um, flour protein powder either and there's a story behind that i think we should get our protein from whole foods not highly refined powdered foods um things like fruit juices which a lot of kids are having unfortunately um i there there i um i think there's a hormonal imbalance that happens with that and it's been proven to be the case in research so um uh, we've kind of gone down a few different little rabbit holes, which is great. I'm really glad. Um, and Melissa's saying, I'm not supposed to eat the whole grains because I've got ulcerative colitis, but I prefer to eat gluten-free. Now what? <clears throat> now what, Melissa? You know, that's a really good question. So the grains that are really damaging the lining of the gut are the ones that have um, uh, that are packaged with, first of all, they're there's different kinds of grains. Not all grains are created equal. And sometimes it's a company that they keep. A lot of the grains in packaged bread, for example, come with things like emulsifiers to keep that bread fresh on the, on the shelf, fresh on the shelf for months, if not years. Uh, there's an interesting study that took the emulsifier of that, of that bread only, gave it to rats, and all the rats got inflamed st uh, gut. So the lining of their gut became inflamed from the emulsifier. It wasn't actually the grain. So we don't know right now if we have a rash of ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, other inflammatory bowel diseases, because of is it the grain or is it what comes with the grain, like the additives that are keeping these grains fresh on the, on the shelf? For example... I eat Ezekiel bread. Ezekiel bread is made out of sprouted grains and that's another level. So now you take these grains which are um, need to be sprouted or soaked in order to deactivate those um, natural plant chemicals that can irritate the lining of the gut. And it's organic and there's no preservatives, which means that if you find it, you'll find it in the frozen section of your grocery store, okay? Now, um, you know, that's that's basically how you do. Now you can go gluten-free grains. Um, a gluten-free grain, for example, is buckwheat, millet, amaranth. These are all, buckwheat is called buckwheat, but it's actually not a weed, it's a seed. So there's a lot of whole grains that are that um, do not have things like gluten um, and even basmati rice. But the thing with basmati rice, ladies, is you're supposed to rinse it in water until the water comes clear and even soak it for at least a day and that's the traditional method of preparing rice because that helps the rice. Um, first of all, there's a couple of things. It generally sprouts the rice on the inside. You don't see it on the outside, but it's sprout. At, it's starting the sprouting um, process on the inside. And that's the thing with oats and rice and millet and amaranth and quinoa too. You're supposed to be soaking these, rinsing and soaking these so that they gently sprout on the inside that deactivates the plant chemicals that, that protect the babies of the seed, the babies of the trees, which what seeds are and grains are, right? 
from being overeaten until they're until it's time to sprout and water is what activates that process so in traditional cultures they would always soak and rinse their grains and in the case of rice rice usually is covered in a bit of arsenic it's just the way that it grows in the soil so when you rinse that off it gets rid it gets rid of the arsenic and when you soak it it, it sprouts it and now you've taken away you don't have additives or processed things with it because it's a whole grain. You've um, soaked away any harmful ingredients um, and you've sprouted it um, on the inside. Like you don't see the sprout on the outside, but on in the inside, it started the sprouting process, which means that all of those like lectins and phytic acids and um, oxalates, uh, are greatly reduced in number so it doesn't irritate the lining of your digestive tract which leads to in an in extreme cases like things like ulcerative colitis okay so thank you ladies i'm going to tell you a little bit more about myself now um because um some people reach out to me and they're like how do i work with you i want you i want you to know exactly how you can work with me um but first, I want to tell you about my Body Wisdom Masterclass that's coming up next week. If you thought this was cool, I'm offering a free masterclass called Body Wisdom, um, and it's being hosted next Monday and Thursday. And um, I'm really excited about it because I put so much effort into it. It's this beautiful one-hour presentation with pictures. Like, pictures are worth a thousand words, and I think it's really important to have pictures, to show people things. A lot of people are visual. If you want to join my masterclass, um, I did post it. I'll add it into this um, live event. And if you go into my Wild Wisdom for Women's Facebook group, um, you will see the event posting there. Reach out to me if you can't find it. I want to have you there because I want you to learn all these important things. Uh, if you want to work with me, I do work as a health transformation expert in this field, which allows me to work with women from around the world. And I have a program called Body Wisdom, which is totally customizable. It includes one-on-one -on -one consultation with me, 24-7 health coach, curated videos that I release to your inbox at regular episodes. We do targeted supplements, like a customized supplement protocol just for you. I have an open office for live Q&As with me every two weeks. We do weekly touch points through email to customize your protocol um, and so much more. Anyways, it's, it's so many things. So if you're, if you're looking for a guide in this health space, please reach out to me, direct message me. I'd be more than help, happy to help you. 